Our next segment on modern physics is still Compton scattering, but in this case we're going to try to find the momentum of the scattered electron and also the direction of the scattered electron. In order to do that we're going to use the conservation of momentum and so we can then understand that the incoming momentum is of course imparted by the incoming photon which is only in the x direction. That means there's no momentum in the y direction, meaning after the collision the momentum in the y direction should add up to zero which means the uh, component of the momentum of the photon after the collision in the y direction should be equal in magnitude to the component of the momentum of the electron in the y direction, of course, after the collision. And that's what we have up here on this equation, that the momentum in the y direction should cancel out. All right, so strategy. First, we're going to find the scattered angle of the photon. From that, we'll calculate the change in the energy, which is then imparted on the uh, electron. That means we'll be able to find the kinetic energy of the electron and henceforth we'll be able to find the velocity of the electron and if we know the velocity of the electron we'll be able to find the momentum of the electron and then finally we should be able to figure out the angle by using conservation of momentum. Seems like a lot of things to do here but let's just take it one step at a time. So the first step should be straightforward. Let's find the new wavelength of the scattered photon and so it would be equal to the original wavelength. We we'll move it across the equal sign plus h over mc times 1 minus the cosine of phi. So this by now, if you've watched the video, should uh, become familiar to you. Let's plug in the numbers. Uh, assuming that the original wavelength was 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, plus h, which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, multiply that times, oh, no, divided by the mass, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, that's the mass of an electron, multiply times the speed of light, and finally multiply that times 1 minus the cosine of the scatter angle, which we assume to be 30 degrees in this case. So we're talking about the scatter angle of the um, photon. All right, so what is that equal to? So 6.626 e to the 34 minus, divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus, divided by 3 e to the 8, multiply that times 1 minus the cosine of 30 equals, and then add that to 0 0.02 e to the 9 minus equals, and so this now becomes 2.0325 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. So that's the new wavelength. Notice that this would be 2 times 10 to minus 11, so it's a little bit bigger than it was before the, the photon got scattered off. So if that's now the final wavelength after the collision, now we're going to find the change in the energy. So the change in the energy is equal to the energy initial minus, <coughs> minus energy final the initial energy would be uh, h times the frequency initial minus h times the frequency final. And of course the frequency can be written as c over lambda, so this would be equal to h c over lambda initial minus h c over lambda uh, final. And so final lambda was lambda prime. And so factoring out an h c, this can be written as h times c times 1 over lambda initial minus 1 over lambda final. And that's a lousy looking lambda, so let me write that again. There we go. Now plug in the numbers. This is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Oh, I forgot the 8 there. All right. Now we multiply times 1 over lambda initial, so 1 over uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 11. That would be meters minus 1 over 2.0325, 0.325 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. And that will give us the change in the energy of the photon before the collision and after the collision. All right, so 1 divided by 2 e to the 11 minus, minus 1 divided by... 2.0325 e to the 11 minus equals 
All right, so now we multiply times the speed of light, times 3e to the 8, and then times 6.626e to the 34 minus, and I get 1.59 times 10 to the minus 16 joules. So that's the change in the energy of the photon. Of course, that energy is imparted onto the electron. So let's do that. We then say that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, which means that v is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, which is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy we have here, 1.59 times 10 to the minus 16 joules, all divided by the mass, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So that will give us the velocity of the electron after the collision, because remember that all of the energy that the photon lost was given to the electron. So we multiply that times 2 and divide by 9.11e to the 31 minus equals and take the square root. And this is 1.86 times 10 to the seventh, I believe. Let me check. Sure thing. Yeah, 1 point times 10 to the 7 meters per second which is about 6% of the speed of light, which makes it still non-relativistic. You always want to check for that. If it's relativistic, you want to do things a little bit differently. All right, now that we know the velocity of the electron, now we can say that the momentum P is equal to mv. We don't have to worry about the gamma, the relativistic effect. So this is equal to the mass, which is uh, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 11, oh, minus 31 uh, kilograms times velocity, which is 1.86 times 10 to the seventh meter per second. So times 9.11 e to the 31 minus equals, and that gives us 1.7 times 10 to the minus 23 kilograms meters per second. All right. Now, we have the momentum of the electron. Now we want to get the momentum of the photon. Remember, the momentum of the photon, P of a photon, is simply equal to a h over lambda. So that would be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds divided by lambda. And lambda of the uh, eventual photon, that's uh, right here. That would be this one right here. So that would be... 2.0325 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. And so let's do that. 6.626 e to the 34 minus divided by 2.0325 e to the 11 minus equals. And we get 3.26 times 10 to the minus 23 kilograms meters per second. Now, notice that the momentum of the electron and the momentum of the photon are kind of the same, right? So you can see here the momentum of the photon is only t about twice as much as the momentum of the electron, so that at least tells you we're in the ballpark here. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to set these two equal to each other, right? We're going to set the y components of each equal to each other, which allows us then to find the scatter angle of the electron. So, first of all, the momentum of the photon in the y direction. <coughs> So P of the photon in the y direction is equal to, that would be the momentum of the photon right here, that would be 3.26 times 10 to the minus 23 kilogram meters per second. And we multiply that times the y component of the momentum. And the y component, of course, would be uh, the opposite of the angle, which would be the sine of the angle of 30 degrees. So times the sine of 30 degrees that gives us the y component of the electron momentum or I should say the not the electron but the photon momentum and so p of the electron in the y direction is equal to the momentum 1.7 times 10 to the minus 23 kilogram meters per second and then we have to multiply the times the sine of theta And then we set those two equal to each other. When we do, when we, this is equal to this, we're looking for the sine of theta. So we can say then that the sine of theta 
is equal to this divided by this. So that would be 3.26 times 10 to the minus 23 divided by 1.7 times 10 to the minus 23 times the sine of 30 degrees. And then, of course, to find theta, we have to take the arc sine of that. Okay, so let's do that. So divide by 1.7 e to the 23 minus, then times the sine of 30. And then we take the inverse of that. And that indicates then that theta is equal to 73.5 degrees, which is the scatter angle of the electron. So we were able to find the velocity of the electron right here. So the velocity of the electron was equal to this. That allows us to find the momentum of the electron, which is equal to mv. Then we notice that the momentum of the photon is h over lambda. Notice that the two are relatively similar, which is good. Now we can say that the y component of the momentum of the photon should equal the y component of the momentum of the electron. We set them equal to each other, solve for sine of theta, and then take the arc sine of theta, uh, arc sine of this quantity to find theta, and theta happened to be 73.5 degrees. So that allows us to find the scatter angle of the electron. So you can see that using the Compton scattering, you can find the changed wavelength, you can find the changed energy of the electron uh, of the photon which means you can find the change energy of the electron which of course is kinetic energy from that we can find the velocity from that we can find the momentum and from that we can find the scatter angle and that's how you use Compton scattering in all those various things